Build again on old foundations. Isaiah chapter 58 verse 12. You will see things raised up in their original state and better. You will be known as people who repair, rebuild, raise up and restore. Alright, so, you know, at the end of every, towards the end of each year, uh, we take some time just to wait upon the Lord and say, God, what are you telling us for the year to come? And so uh, we wait upon the Lord each year, towards the end of each year, and uh, uh, receive from God what, he's, what, what He has to say for us for the year ahead. And as you saw, you know, we try to take testimonies during the course of the year to see how that word is being fulfilled. And I always want to make a few statements before giving the word of the Lord for the new year. One is this is not the only thing that God is saying. So please understand, this is not the only thing. Uh, it is one of the things that we, want, we feel God is highlighting to us as a church people, as a community, something that we specifically go after, something that we can expect. So, but this is not the only thing, but it's something that we believe God is speaking or highlighting for us. The other thing is, remember, we live by the written word of God, right? This is the standard. This is God's word for us. We live by the written word. Uh, anything that God highlights to us is great, but we always go back to the Bible. We live by the Bible, live by the word of God. But it's good for us to hear what, in the now what God is speaking to us, what God is saying. So, uh, you know, sometime in November, we have to do this. And usually uh, I have to preach the message in November because we record it in November for God TV. <laughs> so this is actually the second time that we are preaching this message. Uh, we already preached it for God TV in, uh, I think, mid-November, recorded it. It will be telecast tomorrow on God TV. So anyway, I want to read this particular verse of Scripture for us. It's from Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 12. Isaiah 58 and verse 12. Read it first from the New King James and then from the Good News Bible. God is saying here, those from among you shall build the old waste places. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. And you shall be called the repairer of the bridge, the restorer of streets to dwell in. And I'll read it to us from the, King, from the Good News Bible. It says this, your people will rebuild what has long been in ruins, building again on the old foundations. You will be known as the people who rebuilt the walls, who restored the ruined houses. So the picture God is painting here is that of foundations that were laid. So, so the foundations were laid a long time ago, and these were the right foundations. God calls them old foundations, meaning foundations that were laid according to God's blueprint, the way God wanted it done. He, the foundations were laid, the buildings were built, but what happened? It was laid to ruin. Something caused a ruin of what was built on those foundations. But now God is saying, you will be able, you will rebuild on those foundations. You will raise up. You will restore. You will bring back the glory that was once there. And, and then you will be known by that. You will be known as a people who can rebuild, who can restore, who can bring back the glory. And so here is what I believe God is saying. A word of instruction and two words of promise for us for 2018. The word of instruction is this. To build again on old foundations. Build again on old foundations. And here's the promise. You will see things raised up in their original state of glory and even better. And you will be known as a people who repair, rebuild, raise up, and restore. Amen? I'll say it again and then I'll let you sit down. Build again on old foundations. What will happen? You will see things raised up in their original state of glory and even better. And you will be known as a people who repair, who rebuild, who raise up, 
who restore. So God is calling us to do this. And God is promising us what we will see in 2018. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. And we will explain what this means and how this applies to us. You know, some of us may already being may have already started doing this. But for many of us, I believe God will cause a movement to take place, causing us to come back to go back to these old foundations and build again. And so we're going to. I'll just read out those verses again. Just go the slide back. I'll just read those verses again. Those from among you shall build the old waste places. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You will be called the repairer of the bridge, the restorer of streets to dwell in. Of the Good News Bible. Your people will rebuild what has long been in ruins, building again on the old foundations. So things that have been brought to ruins for whatever reason. You're going to see them raised up on those foundations that were laid. And you will be known by this. People will, so you will see things restored to their original state of glory and even better. And you will be known by this. You'll be known as a people. Who repair, who can rebuild, who can restore, who can bring back the glory. You'll be known by this. Is what the Lord is speaking to us. So in modern language we will say, you know, those old foundations. What are those old foundations? Those old foundations were things, they represent to us God's original design. The way God wanted it to be laid. Things that followed a pattern that God wants. Those old foundations talk about strength and stability. And things were built on this, but for whatever reason, what was built has brought, been brought to ruins. It's been brought to nothing. It's been dismantled, pushed down. But God is saying, 2018, build again on those old foundations. Restore. Bring the glory back on those foundations. And you will be known as a people who can do that. So, I want to just talk a little bit about the application of this. What does it mean to me individually? And in other areas of our lives. In your personal life. In your walk with God. For some of us. We had those foundations laid. You went through APC Children's Church. <laughs> I'm just okay. But you had those foundations laid in your life. At one time there stood a beautiful Building on those foundations, people said, wow, here's a believer who's strong and not be shaken and so on. They had good things to say. Because there was a building that, 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 that came up on those foundations. But for whatever reason, they were dismantled, brought to ruins. Talking about our personal life, I'm talking about our personal spiritual life. For some of us, I believe 2018 is a year when God, in each of our personal lives, He's going to build on those foundations that were laid, and those buildings are going to come back up in your personal life. But with this time, it's going to come back with greater glory. Because every time God restores, it's going to be double or more. He's not going to restore one quarter. Half, three quarters. The glory of the latter is always greater than the former. That's the way God works. 
the honor he brings is always double than before. He gives double honor for our shame. Amen. So in your personal life, in your personal walk with God, you've had those foundations laid, but for whatever reason, what was built on it may have been brought to ruins, may have been destroyed, may have been pulled down, turned down, and all you've got but those foundations are still there. They are right foundations. They are good foundations. And in 2018, God is saying, build again on those old foundations. It will come back up. Amen. And they will come back in their original state of glory and even better in your personal life, in your walk with God. You know, sometimes we've strayed in our spiritual lives from the simplicity of our faith, from the purity of the words. From the work of the Holy Spirit. We've strayed. And in fact, so much of the church, and I don't want to sound critical on New Year's Eve, on, 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 on 1st of January. <laughs> but, you know, so much of the church is just strayed from the simplicity of the faith, from the purity of the word, from the work of the Spirit. And we've replaced, and this has happened unnecessarily, we've replaced it with all kinds of other things. Things that appeal to our senses. Things that look nice. But you know, when we made that journey, all we found was, hey, they just ruined everything God had built. And so we realized our mistake and said, you know what? I need to go back to those old foundations. And I need to build on those foundations again. With the purity of God's word. With the work of the Holy Spirit, because that's the way it was designed for the building to be built. Amen. And if any of us have strayed like that, 2018, God will bring it back. Those things will be built again, but better than before in our personal lives. Build again on those old foundations. You will see them happen. For our family, the same thing. Build again on old foundations. You will see things raised up in their original state of glory and even better. You know, sad to say, but so many of our marriages, so many of our homes, again, please forgive me for being so direct. But they are in ruins. Foundations are there. Foundations are there. But the building is in ruins. It's been torn for whatever reason. Maybe we got too busy with our work life. Maybe we just got carried away with other things. Maybe we couldn't put up with all the idiosyncrasies of our spouse <laughs> and the pressures of kids. I mean, what if, you know, our families, I'm talking about families, I'm talking about marriages, in our church, in amongst God's people. I'm not talking about those outside. I'm talking about our families, our marriages. But 2018. Is a year to build again on those old foundations. Amen. You've got good foundations. You walked down the altar and you said the right thing. You didn't say I may or might. You said I do. <laughs> so the foundations are there. But somewhere along the way, for some reason, what was built on those beautiful foundations, on those old foundations of what God intended for our family, and for our marriage and our family, for some reason, those was laid are, and today are lying in ruins. But 2018, 
I want to challenge you. Build again on old foundations for your marriage and for your family. Build again. Some of you are clapping. Tell your neighbor, build again. <laughs> build it again. It doesn't matter. You know, you look at your, and I begin it. Please forgive me for being direct or descriptive. But let's just face it. Maybe you look at your marriage, you look at your family, and you say, God, it's in ruins. Hey, but you've got those foundations. You've got foundations. Build again on old foundations. Build it. Don't run away just because it's in ruins. Don't give up because it's in ruins. Build again on those old foundations. God will help you do it. You'll be able to raise it up. You'll be able to restore. You'll be able to rebuild. You'll be able to see that come up better than what it ever was. For your marriage, for your family, build again on old foundations. For your professional life, for your business, build again on old foundations. You will see things raised up in their original state of glory and even better. For some of us, thank God, we've stayed the course. But for some of us, in case we've moved away in our professional lives, in our business. You know, when you started out, you started right. Or at least you got right somewhere along the way. So God, I'm going to build my career. I'm going to build my professional life. And if you're a business owner, I'm going to build my business, God, on, 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 on the old foundations, according to the original design. But somewhere along the way, maybe you just wandered off. And you look back and you see what has happened. If, if, and I'm not saying it applies to all of us, but if in your life, in your professional life, or in your business, you find things are in ruins. I want to encourage you by the word of the Lord for 2018. Go back. Build again on old foundations. Go back to the foundations. Build again. And you will see in your professional life, you will see in your business, God raising up, restoring, rebuilding, bringing back and taking you to greater glory. Amen. But build on those old foundations. For us as a church, as a church, we're going to build again on old foundations. I'm not saying, you know, we've gone off into error or heresy or anything like that. But we're going to Continue our emphasis on the old foundations of the Word of God and the work of the Holy Spirit. We want to be that church, that New Testament church that has the book of Acts expression. Amen? Now when the Lord birthed His church in Acts chapter 2, what did the church have? They didn't have any LCD projector. Thank God for that. They didn't have, you know, fancy bands. Thank God for that. They didn't have any of these props that we have, the things that we have. You know, basically, they had the Word of God. Acts chapter 2, they had the entirety of the Old Testament. And they had the four Gospels. It wasn't written, but the apostles had it. So they had the four Gospels. You with me? So from the time the church was born, they had the entirety of the Old Testament and they had the four Gospels. The apostles taught them every day, first hand. 
This is what Jesus taught us. This is what Jesus did. They could recount every miracle. In fact, more than the four Gospels because they had all the miracles that they could tell them. And that's what the early church was raised up in. The Word of God. Some people say the early church didn't have the Word. I beg to differ. They had the Old Testament and they had the four Gospels. That's what the apostles taught them. And within a matter of 20 years, they had the epistles also with them. So they were raised up in the word of God. Are you listening? And they had the Holy Spirit. The church was birthed when the Holy Spirit came upon God's people. That's all they had. What happened to Jerusalem? Shaken. Now we've got the word, the work of the Holy Spirit, and we've got all these other props around us to distract us. <laughs> oh no. Sorry, I don't mean these things in the wrong way. But sometimes we get distracted by all these things and we forget the very simple thing of God's word and the Holy Spirit. That's all the early church had and they shook their then known worlds. And so we want to build on those foundations. We want to stay true to the word of God and the work of the Holy Spirit. And if, you know, we want to use these other things, this PowerPoint projector and sermons with PowerPoints, all that, you want to use all that, it's okay. But hey, don't go away from the word of God and from the work of the Holy Spirit. Let's pursue becoming like the church in the book of Acts and saying, God, we want to get there first and then we want to go beyond that. Amen? That's the kind of church we want to be. 2018. Build again on those foundations. Become that and greater. Greater than the church we see in the book of Acts because God always finishes better than He started. Amen? To see more glory, more work of the Spirit, more power. Through the church. You'll hear us emphasize some of these things in the course of 2018. Next Sunday we'll share what our plan is for 2018. But you know, the purpose of the power of the Holy Spirit was not so that they could have nice services. Jesus didn't say, and you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will have power-packed services. That's not what he said. He said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses. So, simple thing. Start witnessing, you will see the power. Start going out. Start reaching people outside, you will see the power. So we're going to motivate us. We're going to mobilize us. Say, guys... The purpose of the power is to be a witness. Go out and witness. You'll see the power. Amen? It's like you and I, you know, we have generators. You have a generator sitting outside. It's not generating any power. Why? Because it started. What do you start? Go out and be a witness. And then, it comes on. The power comes. So we want to be that church, like the book of Acts. Build on those old foundations. A very important in our ministry to others. In our ministry to others. I believe that God will use many of us in this manner. That we will go to lives that today are in ruins. And God will use you. To help them build again on the right foundations. In our ministry to others. God will use you and me like that. So identify areas that God wants you to be involved. You see, lives that are in ruins. And for each one of us, we may be drawn to some set of people. 
They may be different. Some of us may be drawn to the youth in our city. Some of us may be drawn to children. Some of us may be drawn to some other segment of our society and say, God, I see lives that are in ruins. But God says, you will rebuild, raise up, restore on those old foundations. Amen? And you will be known as people who can do this. So as you start doing this, you're going to see liars brought back to their original state of glory and even better. And people will come to you saying, we know you can do this. Could you come and help us? Because here's a, another pocket of people who are in ruins, but we know you will be known as a people who can rebuild, who can restore, who can raise up. We must pray for our governments and for nations that they will also recognize that there will be a movement. The nations and governments will recognize that strong nations can only be built on age-old foundations. So we've got to pray for that as well. Amen? You know, what causes some of these things? Sometimes it's our neglect. Sometimes it's our waywardness. Sometimes it's the enemy that lies to us. Takes us away from the old foundations and brings about ruin. So how do we do this? How do we build again on the old foundations? I've already mentioned it. Number one, get back to the Word. And Jesus said it's in Matthew 7, verses 24 to 27. You know, he said, the wise man, he's the one who heard my sayings. And he did them. Whoever hears my sayings and does them, he's like this wise man that built his house upon the rock. So get back to the word of God. In your personal life, for your family, for your marriage, for your, for your professional life, for your business, for your ministry. Stay with the word. With our, us as a church, the word. And second, depend on the anointing. I just want to refer to one more verse of scripture before we close. In Isaiah 61, verses 1 through and 4, as Isaiah is talking about the anointing, he says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn. To console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. And look at verse 4. And they shall rebuild the old ruins. They shall raise up the former desolations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the desolation of many generations. So it's the anointing of God. That will bring about the rebuilding, the raising up, the restoring. So, build again on old foundations. You will see things raised up in their original state of glory. As a church, I believe we will move more and more to become like the church in the book of Acts. This year. More and more. Being raised up according to God's original design. And number two, you will be known as a people who repair, rebuild, raise up, and restore. There will be a reputation, if you will, that here's a people who are doing it right. Here's a people who know how to repair and rebuild because we're doing it according to God's word and by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Are you ready? Let's stand to our feet, please. What we usually do at the end of each New Year's Eve service is we give out magnets that carry this word so that you can take it home and put it on the fridge and remind yourself every, or as often as you see it about the word of the Lord so you can pray over it for yourself, pray over it for these various areas of life. So we're going to go ahead and distribute the magnets. Also at this time, if you want to give an offering, uh, give to the Lord if you came prepared to do that. We'll just pass the offering bags and you can do it. 
uh, uh, there is no compulsion whatsoever, but if you want to do it, if you came intending to do it, you're most welcome to do that. Uh, I mean, many of you do your giving online, so that's perfectly fine. But in case there are people here, you came with an intent of, of giving to the Lord this, this, this New Year's Eve service. We'll pass the offering bags. You can also uh, uh, give as you feel led in your heart to do. I just call our worship team up at this time, please. And while we do these two things, in these last few moments of the service, I want you to pray this word over your own life. So the magnets will come to you. Just receive one per family. Otherwise, you'll end up with four on your refrigerator. <laughs> and you don't want to see it all that. So just take one per family. Just check. If dad is taking it, then mom, you don't need to take it. <laughs> all right, just one per family. One on your refrigerator is enough. So one per family will come to you. The offering bags will be passed. And if you want to do the offering, you're welcome to do that. But most importantly, I wanted you to take in these last few moments, just pray. And say, God, I heard the word. How do you want me to apply it? How do you want me to build again on old foundations? What are the things you want me to see raised up in their state of in the original state of glory and even better God for some of us it may be our personal spiritual lives for some of us it may have to do with our marriage and family for some of us it may have to do with our professional life and business for some of us it may be in the ministry and what we're doing for other people uh, whatever area you feel God is speaking to you I want you to pray about it say God 2018 in this area or maybe it could be multiple areas of our lives I want to see things raised up Brought back, rebuilt, what's in ruins, God? I want to see it changed and brought into a place of glory. Today it may look like it's in ruins, it's torn down for whatever reason. But I want to see it rebuilt, restored. Maybe it's your whole life. Say, God, my whole life is in ruins. Listen, God's a good God. He can raise you up again. He can rebuild, he can restore, he can bring back to glory what lays in ruins. Pray about the ministry God will have you be involved in in 2018. God will use you this way to help rebuild other lives. Pray about that. I'm going to give, leave this time for you and me as the worship team just... Lead us in a few moments. Just take this time to pray, and then I'll come and close. Please pray about it.
Father, I just pray over each of our lives here this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, by the power of your word that's been released over us, and by the power of your Holy Spirit, I pray over areas of our lives that may seem to be in ruins today. But Father, in the journey ahead, even according to your word, let those areas be rebuilt. Let them be raised up in a state of glory that, was, that is even better than the former. Lord, whether it's our personal lives, our walk with you, our marriages, our family, families, our professional lives, our businesses, our ministries, God, let them be raised up by the power of your Holy Spirit to greater glory. That what lies in ruins today would come into a place of greater glory. It'll be raised up by the power of your Holy Spirit. I release the anointing of God upon our lives that causes a rebuilding, a raising up, a restoring, a raising up into a place of glory. What lies in ruins, what has been torn down, what has been trampled over, and it will be raised up by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the anointing of God. And God himself will be glorified. And Father, your word says, you will be known. Your people will be called repairers of a bridge. Restorers, repairers, rebuilders, razor uppers. And so, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that by the power of your Holy Spirit, there will be a Holy Ghost, God-given reputation coming upon us in our community, in this city, and across this nation, and even across nations, that we are rebuilders, we are repairers, we are restorers. We can come and raise up. We can come and rebuild. We can come and bring back to glory. What is in ruins today? Let it be known that there are a people who walk according to the word of God and walk under the anointing of the Holy Spirit and they are divinely empowered to rebuild, to raise up, to restore. Release, O oh God, that heavenly, God-given honor and reputation upon your people. That the world will come asking, that the world will come inviting, saying, please come. We've got something in ruins, but we know that you are repairers. You are restorers. You are people who can rebuild. Let invitations come. Let the world come asking us, come and help us rebuild. Father, we pray that there will be supernatural stories, supernatural testimonies throughout the course of this year of what's been ruins being raised up, restored, being brought to a place of greater glory. That there will be stories and testimonies of God's people stepping into lives and situations in places that were in ruins but are able but they're able to bring glory in there rebuilding recovering restoring raising up in there let it happen across our city let it happen across this nation let it happen in the nations of the world let your people as your word says they will be called repairers of the bridge 
restorer of streets or paths to dwell in. They will be called. We will be called. Let it happen, Father. Let businesses, industries, let doors swing wide. But we, your people, will walk in to restore, rebuild, to set in place things according to old foundations. To restore the paths in which people have to walk in. Release that upon us in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. God bless you. Have a great 2018. Expect this, desire this, pray this, and let's see it happen. We trust that this message was a blessing to you. We would love to hear from you. You can email us at contact at apcwo.org. Also visit our website, apcwo.org for additional resources. Thank you for listening and God bless you.